Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's Try. My name is Retromation, and this is Tower of Chaos, an auto-battling roguelite that I'm very excited to be checking out the demo for as part of the Steam Next Fest. It says it combines auto-battling with risk and reward exploration and roguelite gameplay. So I'm very curious to see what exactly that means and entails. So let us pop on in. Wow, that was a big jump in audio. So this there. is the Tower of Chaos. I also have to deal with such things after my death. Siva! Can you hear me? It looks like our connection is stable. As this is your first entrance to the tower, you have to go through the vestibule. If you do, you will immediately teleport into the tower in the future. It looks like the guards already showed up to greet you. I will give you support to face them. Choose which units you want to use. Uh, okay. Forest Rangers, Scouts, Undead, Undead Assassin, Ghoul Zombie. That's just so, it's just such a vanilla choice. No way. Leviathan, though? I gotta be honest, I'm a, I'm a Forest Ranger kind of guy, though. I kind of like this. Interesting choice. What? Judgy? Serve you well. It's time to destroy these pathetic guards. Uh, left click to move, right click to rotate the camera, map navigation... Focus on camera on arcs, sure. Interesting. Oh, okay. So we have, a, okay, so we have a giant map. Is this kind of like our, oh, okay. I prefer it to like a standard grid if that's kind of what's going on here. Just like a, you know, like a Slay the Spire style map. If this giant overworld is in place of it. Oop, hold on. Defeat enemies to pass, you receive experience and summoning essence for victory. You want to attack? Yes. All right. Also, heads up. I am sick. If you am can't I tell my, my voice. Tower? I, uh, you know, getting better, but still very much sick. If you hear some voice cracks or voice giving Don't out, I'm in that stage I've of the sickness. I've created an isolated area. It serves as a battlefield. If you had a fight in the open, the tower would detect you much sooner. Okay. Somehow they don't attack me. The audio balance just within the narration is kind of out of whack. There's sometimes where he's talking where it's like really loud and sometimes where it's really quiet. There's like not uh, properly compressed audio. My barrier prevents them from doing so. You have time to properly prepare for the fight. When you're ready, I'll lower the barrier. F to buy summoning experience, R to refresh your summonable units. F1 to for the battle tempo. Okay, so like speed up. Gotcha. Numerous groups of enemies will stand in my way. The side with the less unit standing wins. Sure, before starting the fight, I can summon new units and change the position of current ones. It's not a battle or it's not a chess game. Yeah, it checks out. Uh, basic attacks deal physical damage and regenerate their mana. Basic auto, you know, battling stuff again. Physical gets reduced by armor. Magic is reduced by magic protection. Inevitable bypasses all armor. Okay. So do we have any money to start with? I mean, I see this arrow pointing down to these here. So those are the, like, we get those for free. But we, uh, okay, yeah, we don't get anything to start with. Hero takes 40%. Yeah, so this is straight up, like, going for, like, a teamfight tactics but single-player roguelite vibe, which, uh, big if true. So let's see. We got, um, we have the Forest Ranger set bonus. Uh, okay, stop with the arrow. It's covering up my text. Every few seconds, all Forest Guardians get a shield and bonus attack speed. Okay, checks out. We don't have any other set bonuses right now, but since we have three Forest Rangers, we get that set bonus. I'm sure the tutorial will tell us that later, too. Uh, passive. The hero increases their combat abilities as they get closer to death. Okay. You have, like, a Berserker in Rage. Hero takes less damage, so you have a little bit more tankiness. So you seem like the one to protect the most, which is interesting because you... To me, almost look like the tankiest of the bunch. Eh, no, that one does. So it seems fine for both of these to be up there. I feel like we could look at all their abilities, but for now, let's just give ourselves a little bit of a battle here. So we've got the ability. There's a lot of, like, um... Like, a lot of designed clutter. Like... <laughs> There's a lot of clutter, which could make it very difficult Pathetic. to keep track of things in These a genre that's already hard to no keep track challenge. of. I mean, hey. Pride comes before the fall. Remember, this is merely the vestibule of the tower. 
Look there. It seems that we found something useful. Be sure to take these resources with you. They'll be useful in our quarters. M to zoom in and out the map. Journal, blessings, encyclopedia, encyclopedia. There's so much stuff here. What the hell? Uh, stationary battles. Stationary guards look after uh, a variety of valuable loot. They won't attack me unless I start the fight myself. The color of the aura determines the strength. The closer I red, the more powerful. Uh, during my journey, I'll stumble upon valuable finds, potions, and resources that are useful in the quarters as well as exploration. I must remember that I'm not taking any gold nor summoning essence back with me to my quarters, so I may spend it freely. Oh my word. Yeah, I will say, just looking at... If I, if I step back from my screen, like a foot more, it just looks like a blur. Like, I can't tell any... I can't visually tell anything. I love how vibrant it is, but dear God, maybe a step too far. Talent crystals, building cubes, blessing gems, alchemy flowers. Great. A potion. The only one Uzin managed to create before you left the quarters. It will be especially useful in combat. Use it wisely. It only lasts for a few uses. I'll remember that. Can't click to skip. It's only spacebar. Potions, each of them have a special effect. Depending on the potion, I can use it on an ally or an enemy. Limited number of uses, after which they will run out. After using a certain type of elixir, I won't be able to use it again for a while. So it's kind of like maybe our, one of our only types of active abilities. All right. So can I look around the map without um, actually moving? Because though I I think it's hard to tell, but I really do. I guess Arcs, this is the only. Out. It's an ambush. I know. Sorry, I'm gonna talk over these people because they keep on jumping in every five seconds. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk over them inevitably. Oh, interesting. When you're ambushed, the battle begins without a without a tactical phase. It's a great chance to use the potion to make enemies weaker. Use the potion on any of the enemy units. Ine immediately receives inevitable damage. Let's put it on you then. Okay. So we can buff up the speed there. <coughs> Looks like I can't put my guard down even for a second. The tower is full of dangers. You never know when the next ambush will appear. That's why it's a good thing that I sense Patron's blessing in front of you. Some enemies stay hidden, wait for ambush once they attack me. I mean, yeah. The uh, only way to reveal the ambush is to use a special building, the Thieves' Guild. By picking up blessings, I'll be able to choose which of the learned gifts will accompany me until the end of the current journey in the tower. Each patron has a characteristic blessing source in order to receive the gifts. I must first obtain the blessing source in the quarters. I found a blessing. So you are the new conqueror. We passed each other at the quarters, but we haven't had a chance to talk yet. My name is Omis, and I am the patron of destruction. My job is to support you in destroying the tower. Hades, boon incoming, maybe? Why don't you come with me instead of staying in the quarters? Hmm. Unfortunately, it is impossible for me. The only keeper of balance allowed to enter the tower is the Conqueror. That is you. It is my duty, so as well as the rest of the patrons, to share our power with you. Choose it as you see fit. What on God's green? Pick a blessing? I can't. Oh, it's oh, it's all the way. We got this one up here. I I see the text. Pick a blessing, and I'm like, okay. Well, we start here then. Allied champions holding an item get a hundred health and ten attack attack damage. Okay. Interesting. Then we just got like a bear. Uh, so blessings. Those are those. Do they? Do we get them within a run, or is that like a full on meta units? This is just clearly like a giant. Uh, encyclopedia compendium of all the stuff. This is a... Okay, yeah. So these are all just kind of like encyclopedias. Okay. I was worried that they were things that are the, like integral to uh, actual gameplay, but they can be or they cannot be. It doesn't matter. Uh, it depends how deep you want to go in that stuff. You're already gathering some summoning essence. The yep. time has come for you to use it to strengthen your army. With summoning essence, I can materialize more creatures or increase my summoning level so I can summon stronger creatures. 
Experience increases slightly with each battle won, so I have to balance the quantity and quality of my troops. Is there... Okay, hold on. It says, after combat, you get 50 summoning essence and 10 for interest. Do we get 10% interest, or does it just give us a flat 10 all the time? I'm not sure. So we have 100 bucks. I will go for this. Three representatives of the same unit combined into the same. Yep. Second level, typical auto battler. Three of the second merge into a single unit of the third. Basically, we can rank them up by getting more of the same. So we have to get a Seder, I guess. Even though it's not relevant to my build, really. Level up to use more units at a time. That should be enough. With such an army, we will be fine. Speak up! Features share between units. Each attribute has its own unique effect. The effect can only affect the creatures that have the attribute or the... Or can... Wait, what? The effect can only affect creatures that have the attribute or the entire team. It can only do one of the two things, I guess. The more units with the trait, the more powerful it becomes. Only unique units are considered. If you have two of the same type, the bonus will only apply to one. There are special items, emblems, that give a unit the trait that the original did not have. Uh, so again, th this stuff is all, like, if you're familiar with auto chess, the auto chess genre, this is all, like, the most basic of basic stuff that you need to know. So, it's just talking about set bonuses over here. What I was explaining, since we have three units that are classified as Forest Rangers, Forest Ranger, Forest Ranger, Forest Ranger, we have the, the set bonus of three Forest Rangers. If we had six, we would get another set bonus, etc., etc. Um, but yeah, by leveling up, we are allowed to have another unit on the board. What is your ability? Tears out a portion of their target's health, dealing magic damage and healing themselves. Sure. I mean, I think we're good to go. But yeah, I think, like, the shield... Maybe the health bars are too big, and the, the shield effects are... It's not that they're bad effects, they're just... Very, very, um... I don't know. Cluttered, I think, is the word I said, and I think it's apt. Okay, I was just expecting I'd be interrupted. For what it's worth, the voice acting is, like, good. There is an observatory in front of us. Activate it, so we will know what is in the area. Or at the very least, I was thinking of her. Like, she's got it. But that, she's doing a great job. Uh, observatory discovers the surrounding area. It seems that the observatory in the vestibule of the tower is not that efficient. Move on. Darkness, it overflows the tower. Approaching it, I discover new areas. Approaching it, I discover new areas with the right talent. I'll be able to increase my discovery range. More special buildings that reveal the surroundings to me. Okay. Scoot? Is there truthfully... Oh, I can click. I can't... Dr oh, God. Oh, there we go. I just couldn't tell because we have to hold it there for a while. What the hell is going on over here? What in the Alice in Wonderland in space is happening? I, I dig it. I will say, you, you can't say that they are this truly like... in front like, of me oh. looks useful. <laughs> Let me talk. <laughs> that they're not going for a unique vibe. Indeed. It is one of the tower storages. Search it. You'll surely find some useful stuff. Searching it, certainly. I'll come across valuable loot. Before I reach it, though, I'll most likely have to fight the guardians that block the way. In order for the storage to appear in the tower, the architect will have to create it in the quarters. Okay. I did find something. Is it some kind of a recipe? I'm unable to read it. You found a recipe for a new potion. Our alchemist will decipher it when you return to the quarters. The issue with having, like, uh, a double-dipping tutorial like this, you know, Essence we have the... mine. <laughs> we will have great use of it. Approach and take over. It's like I'm being told the, everything twice, right? Like, I'm being told in the text and on the screen uh, in the way that, like, actually gives me the full info. We get the flavorful but slightly not that descriptive version and then a descriptive version. It does just make it feel like we're being told the same thing twice. If I manage to conquer this, I get a valuable reward for every fight I win. The mines are no longer active when I enter the next floor. 
Or I leave the tower. I can upgrade the mines in the headquarters to get more resources from them for winning battles. I will get a valuable reward for every fight I win. Can you get, like, more than one here or something? Uh, you conquer the mine, you'll receive... Oh, just like for Fantastic. afterwards. Gotcha. The mine will provide you with an extra summoning essence after each battle you win. Uh, sorry, I have to skip that. That's that this was triple dipping. This looks well guarded. It's a bank. The guards are keeping an eye on things stored here. Take care of the guards and take over the loot. The vault is a building that contains loot. <laughs> the guards not. The guards do not protect it from the outside, only from the inside. The vault fight is unusual because my, my troops will be surrounded on all sides, and I won't be able to trade active units until the battle ends. Uh, in order to for the vault to appear in the tower, oh yeah, architect, I heard that before. Let's give it a shot. So we're gonna be attacked from all sides, and instead we can't swap out our units, aka like I won't be able to to buy anyone new or anything. So you were, I mean, do you have like more health innately or something? No, you, you're called the protector, but you're, it's weird that the protector needs so much protection. This feels about right to me. We have only two more uses of this. What the hell is happening? I gotta say that. Blueprint. I don't know what can be created with it, but our architect Luxox will definitely be able to handle it. Creating new buildings and upgrading the existing ones will be crucial to destroying the tower. The format and the world is really appealing and interesting to me. I think that they, I think there's some elements that uh, uh, are, are very over-designed that are leading to things being, and I'm not just talking visual, I'm not talking visuals, like, you know, there's a little bit of visual, like a little bit too much debris and stuff like that, uh, probably, but just like a couple cluttered elements and it's it's very, uh, you know, lengthy in its uh, description of some, some sort of basic stuff. Battle reward 216, I'll take it. Looks like we're lucky. The incarnations of chaos will gladly exchange their goods for gold which can be collected in the tower. Go and buy as many goods as you can afford. Gladly exchange their goods for gold, which can, which can be collected in the, yeah. Didn't you tell me to take the resources to headquarters? Gold and summoning essence are exceptions. You won't be able to take it outside the tower, so you don't have to save it. Here, I can exchange gold. Yep, yep, yep. Gold goods vary in store type. I can upgrade them at the architect. Yep, 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 yep. Gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Ooh. Oh, we did we do just get all of them, okay. Random item ingredients. Great. Let's move on. These items will be useful in the upcoming fights. Okay, so we're gonna get like a sword, sword, mana stone. I'm What's happening? <coughs> I'm having a hard time breathing. I'm having a hard time talking, dude. I am assuming that these uh, materials can combine together to make items. The more you fight and move around the tower, the stronger it becomes, increasing its chaos level. The higher the level of chaos, the stronger the opponents. You will also earn an increased amount of essence for defeating them. But I'd recommend keeping the chaos level as low as possible. It can get to a level where you can't handle it. Like, it's the risk of rain system, right? It's the... As the long risk. as we are in the vestibule of the tower, I will be able to keep it at the current level. Once you are in the tower, and the level of chaos increases significantly, go to the next floor. That will restart the chaos level. I'll try to remember. The more I... It's... Yeah. I... Again... I am enjoying it. I am enjoying it despite its best efforts. Gate to the floor, Guardian. You need to get the key. On the every floor of the tower, I need to get to open the gate to get to the... Or it, It is on every floor of the tower. I need it to get... 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So we need that. It's protected by you. So we can't get that. But you're you're red. But we need it to leave. Deadly. I'm right clicking over here. Floor guardian defeated to reach the next floor of the tower. trying to right-click this. Give me more info. You said... It's, it, it, there we go. So it seems like, yeah, it is required, but this says deadly. Whatever. Kill me! It's time for you to use the items you bought. It is best to hand them over to the selected unit. Two items will merge into yep, one yep, yep. that is more powerful. Uh... Items can strengthen a specific unit. They can have up to three items equipped. Items have their own individual effects. They increase stats. Some grant special abilities. Items can either be components that can be combined together to make new items. Items are created by two components. Or god items, the most powerful of the items that they cannot be crafted and can only be found. Okay. So here we are. Able to play. So... Shellfish? We're one off of Vampire? But okay, hold on. I'm pretty far from experience at level up, I, I would assume, here. So what is... You're a demon and a renewer, but you're also a level twoer. So... Okay, here we go. So that's a level up. Okay, I know... Okay, fine. You want me to do the item stuff first. Fine, 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 fine. Uh, who attacks the fastest is usually the good way to go for flat attack damage stuff. 0.8 attacks per second. 6.5. You are the fastest. Okay. Health, mana, attack, damage, ability, strength. I mean, I think we can piece together all of those things individually. Status effects. Uh, oh, disarm, they can't attack. Uh, death rejection. They stay alive with one HP point. When death rejection ends, uh, they will die regardless of their current health. That's good to know. It's kind of the thing. I'm going to try and, like, Cliff Notes uh, pick out the things that are uh, more unique here. That are unique to the genre. Or unique to the game from the genre, etc. Maybe I should have just got for the uh, Golem. The demon and the renewer, like, I, you have no real reason to be on my squad. Storm Wolf. Electric Bolt to the farthest enemy. But yeah, I could get you. You would give me the warrior bonus. Vampire. Vampires specifically get increased attack speed and heal for damage dealt. Seems kind of nice. Uh, other, otherwise, we could get Warrior. Start each battle with Shield. You know what? I'm doing I can only have... Uh, can I sell? I just realized that. I guess, can I not sell? Really? It's certainly not letting me drag them anywhere but the board. Interesting. I'll get the warrior bonus, though. Alright. Will it be better? Who really knows? We have our item. Probably should have popped uh, one of the guys we were focusing on, but we're all good. Pick up the key and open the gate. When you defeat the guardian, you will finally be able to enter the tower. Okay. Have to hit space bar to leave. Are we out of here? We can't click and drag around the map, to be clear. Like, that's why this is... Uh, it's doing it like that. 
because I cannot click and drag. So this is the Guardian, huh? He really looks stronger than the rest. Indeed. This fight is sure to be exhausting. Each Guardian fights in a different way. I have described their skills on the Table of Commandments. Be sure to read it before I lower the barrier. Guardians always have multiple waves. Good to know. All right. Guardian Destruction tears out a portion of the target's health and then heals himself. Fair enough. Rules. When the Guardian's health drops below 66 and 33, the Guardian Phenomenon will begin. What is happening here? For 15 seconds, all units take damage reduced by 80% and healing reduced by 80% from all sources. Okay. During the challenge, several energy orbs will appear outside the combat area, which will start flying ahead every after a few seconds. Each of the orbs passing through the enemy will heal them. Hitting an ally will deal them inevitable damage. At the beginning of the challenge, several light talismans will appear at the talisman bench. The conqueror can use the talisman of light on any field, creating a barrier there. It will be active for a few seconds and dispel the orb that hits it. Be mindful of the effect that is... Okay, this is... Okay, I will say... This is... Very complex, but ultimately really, really interesting. Because what this reminds me of... This reminds me of, like, an MMO raid. You know what I'm saying? Like, you kind of get these things... It feels like a lot, but it's really not that bad. But, like, it's kind of... It gives us something to do, you know? Which is something you can't always say in an auto battler. Uh, so use barriers near a large number of units. We're going to get something on our bench that lets us do stuff with that. It's good to know. Forest Gremlin. Could get that instead. Let's try and go for all in on that. Is there really... Is there a way to sell? There's got to be, right? I refuse to believe there's no sell. Well, I bought experience. That's fine. I think we have an okay layout, all things considered. So let's just give it a go for now. Okay, so when he hits a certain health level, 66%, that's when the uh, these orbs are going to start coming out. Uh. Okay. That is really interesting. I, I kind of beef that, though, ultimately. Can I just put it straight on them, or does it matter? That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool to actually give you a little bit of something, something you got to do. So this isn't over yet. Speak up. Regroup your units. Some of them are wounded. Are they? During fights with multiple waves, you can uh, regroup your troops after each wave, but you cannot replace participating units or give them items. But you can change the position. After every wave, they heal 25% of their max HP, and I can enhance the power of this by using talents. <laughs> okay. If any creatures fall in combat, they'll be resurrected with 25% of their max. Okay. I don't think there's particularly much I need to change, but I also understand this now a little bit better. I kind of I, I like my layout fine. Probably speed up until we get you down to 66 here. It seems to fully block them, right? Like it. 
yeah, the way I understand it, it, it full deletes them, so we could put it on the unit, but I'm not, I'm not as convinced that that saves them from damage. Okay, hold on. Uh, I think we're actually, I think we are actually fine everywhere. Whatever. Okay, that one was gonna hit. Okay, I, I thought so. That was the only one I thought might hit. All right, that was, gotta admit, it's a cool take on the genre. It's a cool take on the genre doing something like that. The vestibule is behind us and the tower is open. Good job. Thank you. I don't need praise. All I care about is that you stick to the deal. Of course. Your daughter's imprisoned soul will be released and we'll be able to enter the realm of God as soon as we destroy the tower. According to the contract, her soul is safe, and like the rest of the imprisoned souls, she is asleep. This will continue until you destroy the tower core. Then open the portal to the tower for me. I will take care of it as soon as possible. The real tower is a completely different league than the vestibule. Each floor is more difficult than the last. Before you go, talk to the rest of the guards and strengthen yourself. Start by talking to Luxox. He's our architect. You will find him on a smaller balcony. He loves being there. Uh, local guardian quarter quarters. Uh, our base very close to the tower. Uh, that I'm trying to destroy. All the things created in the quarters will remain using elements in the nearby tower, the keepers of order, who are near my allies. Spend all their time here. Each of them goes about their duties. Every time I'm defeated in the tower, I'll be sent to the local quarters. There are many characters in the base who will help me reach the core. I should speak to them as often, often as possible. Okay. None of you are talkable. It's, the movement is so rigid. Like, I can't, you can't hold left to move uh, further. You have to click, click, click. I take it your lax ox. Siva told me that I should talk to you. Wouldn't it be in the interest of a well-mannered man to introduce himself first? I'm afraid I'll soon get used to the company of uncouth people. I'm Arx. Listen, I really don't have time for pleasantries. I have to destroy the tower. Uh, just this once, I'll turn a blind eye to your lack of manners. My job is to construct buildings. Even you, I presume, can handle such a simple task as fetching building cubes and blueprints. When I create a building, it will start appearing in the tower, and you will be able to admire the fruits of my talent. Without the buildings I raise, in vain will be the efforts of your mission. That is why each cube is worth its weight in gold. Well, now that you're here, let's use the ones you brought with you. I also see a new scheme. Magnificent. Let us get to work. Okay. Uh, bank. The bank will now start appearing in the tower. Oh my god, what? Finished. From now on, you will encounter this great construction while conquering the tower. Now, head to Leah, the Octopus of Chaos. Her aquarium stands almost in the middle of the quarters. Octopus? What's so incomprehensible about it? Go now. I want to look at the stars in peace. Architect creates the buildings. If I provide cubes, the more structures you set up, the more advanced things you can produce. Uh, decorations are, are the best for exercise. They have no practical use in the tower, but they develop the architect's experience in creation. Okay. What on God's green, man? So this... This is the meta prior. <laughs> There's so much. Uh, it's a lot of meta progress stuff, man. It's a shame. It's a shame. I really hate it in uh, strategy roguelikes. I feel like it just doesn't um, doesn't go. It just does not sit well with me uh, in a strategy roguelike. But hey, tis what tis. I guess I was supposed to come and meet you. Hello, Arx. Nice to see you. I am the Octopus of Chaos, and I will share my talents with you. If you feed me with crystals, our talents will become stronger and we will learn more. However, you must remember that I will not be able to give you all the talents at the same time, so you will have to choose which ones you want to use at the moment. Octopus using telepathy. That's a new one. 
Well, it would be hard for me to communicate without telepathy, you know. Water and stuff. Give me the crystals and choose which talent you would like to work on. Okay, so this is like the, uh... This is like the mirror. There's some, like, extremely obvious Hades influences. I think that they saw Hades, they were like, Ah, yes, yeah, lots of narrative. Lots of dialogue. Uh, and then all of the, like, we got the, some of the meta stuff. Uh, but hey, start the expedition with extra gold, or at the beginning of the expedition, a hero of a certain value will join you. Sure. I feel like we'll be a great team. Before you go to the tower, you should learn a new blessing from one of the patrons. But first, talk to all four of them. Oh my god. It would be nice to at least say hello. Uh... We can develop talents. She'll need special crystals we find in the expedition. Uh, before each expedition, I can choose different combinations. Okay. Yep. Four patrons. Each possess, possess their own path of power. We saw them earlier in the run, so I kind of know. Uh, when I unlock my the new... Wait, hold on. Okay. In order to learn the new gift, I must gather enough blessing gems. Yeah. Just like... They took the Hades thing of like, let's have like 12 meta currencies. Which I would say is one of the only things I don't like about Hades is the fact that they split the meta progression up into like an absurd amount of convoluted meta currencies that, that just kind of, it felt very like messy. It felt like one of the only weirdly messy parts of Hades to me is how many different types of meta currencies you had to keep track of at a, any given time. It was just a little wild. Uh, let's see... But we basically, when I unlock the gift, I'll be able to activate in the tower. To achieve this, I need to find the source of the blessing of the appropriate patron. The gifts are only active during the next, during the expedition in the tower. If I fail, I have to find the blessing source again on the next attempt. Dual gifts are the most powerful. Yeah, like duo boons. I, I'm with you. I, I gotcha, I gotcha. So if you've played auto battlers and you've played Hades, like a lot of this is going to be familiar to you. Hello, Arx. They call me Varus, patron of the shadow. Unlike the rest of these goody goodies, my path focuses on cheating and bullying my opponents. Oh, cheating? You will surely appreciate its beauty. Yes. Indeed, it sounds like a useful thing. I do like cheating. Hello, Conqueror. My name is Sorana, and I am the patron of protection. If you value the defense of your army, my blessings will surely help you. Hello, I am Arx. Better defense certainly sounds useful. Hello, Arx. It's good to meet you in person. I suspect you are in a rush to the tower. If you want to strengthen the path of destruction, give me the blessing gems and tell me which blessing you choose. Hello. You must be the new conqueror. My name is Arana and I am the patron of healing. If you want to develop my path, all you need to do is bring me gems of blessing. No voice line for it? Cheating. Cheating. Uh, allied heroes holding the holding the item. The item blitz. I don't know. Allied heroes have their ability power increase at the beginning of battle. The enemy with the highest ability power has its attack speed reduced by twenty five. I don't know. I see you have already chosen your new blessing. One last thing before you go back to the tower. Talk to Uzin. He's our alchemist. Okay. <clears throat> we know what potions are, though, don't we? Uh, if you bring recipes for potions, you can bring them to Uzin, who can concoct new ones for me. Each have a unique effect. Uh, I need alchemy flowers, which you can find at the tower. You can only take a few potions on each expedition, limited number of uses. Yeah, I, I feel like I've been told Hello. that. Am I, I am crazy? Arx. I'm supposed to talk to you before heading to the tower. I see you introduce yourself normally, and that asshole Laxos has already picked on you. I'm Uzim. I deal with alchemy. Bring me alchemy flowers and new recipes, and I will prepare new potions for you and strengthen the current ones. Don't worry about supplies. Once I make a potion, I can create as many copies of it as I want. So don't worry about running out of something. G 
Give me the flowers you've picked up in the tower so far, and let's enhance one of the potions we already know. Okay. So we can upgrade, or we can unlock it? Great. Before each expedition to the tower, you can choose a few potions to take with you. Their stock will be renewed every floor, so feel free to use them. Gotcha. The stronger our bond is, the more potions you can bring. Interesting. With. You can choose one now. I am precisely one bonded with you. Great choice. I Great guess choice. Siva has already opened the portal to the tower. Good luck, Arx. Thanks, Rosie. <laughs> I don't think it's possible, but go ahead and try. All right. Oh my, oh my. Let's go take a look here. What does the beginning of a run sort of look like? Uh, mark search area as a conqueror. I can instinctively sense the area where the key and the gate of to the upper floor are located. Has its limitations. Allows me to narrow my search to a quarter of the floor. It's not that bad. Uh, the Prison of Souls. I must try to save my body. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, I mean, you lose, you die. I gotcha. Mages, forest rangers. We'll, we'll definitely go with something different. Renewer. I don't know. There's only two of them. This has, like, a little bit extra synergy. This, I mean, they, I guess they both technically do. Yeah, I'll take the Renewers. Alright, so we know that it is in this general area. Abandoned Forge, basic. Three skulls, does that mean... So, I was told that the closer the color is to red, the more dangerous it is. Is the three skulls three waves, then? Oh, my lord! With enough summoning essence, I will get an extra amount of it every fight I win. For every hundred... Uh, unit, wait, hold on. For every hundred essence units, one orb of interest will be created, which gives ten units of essence for winning a fight. Let's just say 10% interest, man. I need to figure out when it's better to use up on my essence to buff on my troops and when I should accumulate it for later. Uh, dedicated summon. I can use it every few fights. Using it, I'll be able to summon a unit with a trait of my own choosing. I will need to use much more summoning essence than usual to summon dedicated units. Both the frequency of a dedicated summon and its... Yeah, okay. So, gotcha. So every six battles, I can forceful summon in a uh, what will probably be a relevant unit. Okay, so we have uh, these fools. Of all of the things that have been told to me, I am baffled. There it is. Oh, it, no, okay. It just wasn't letting me sell before. Okay. All right. Because, yeah, that guy's not that relevant to us. That was our freebie. We, the freebie we got. So we have Renewer. We have Undead. Demons. Of 10 bucks. I'll just buy the Seder. I feel like you usually want to roll early. So what do we have? You are... Eh. I guess if you steal from the enemy, that's not that bad. Uh, Hero summons a mana devouring sphere... All enemies hit by the sphere take damage and lose their mana. I mean, that's pretty cool. Takes reduced damage. You're certainly implied to be a little bit tankier than the others. This may be all right. Okay. Give it a go. So why did you end up targeting over here? Also, boy, howdy. So why, yeah, why did they prioritize diagonal instead of closest? Blessing gems? But yeah, we do have to be... I've, I've searched it, right? That was me searching it. I have to be careful since the longer we're here, the more we do... Um... 
It says normal. It doesn't say deadly. It just says there's three skulls. Does that mean three waves? I'm not sure. There's the satyr leveled up. Uh, undead assassin. I think maybe like what what I'm gonna do right now is buy things that have the relevant. Uh, first of all, I can't put it in forward, right? Yeah. Buy things that have the relevant. Uh, irrelevant. <laughs> the irrelevant um, sets, but not spend anything on rerolls or anything until we get up to like a hundred. So now they're attacking you. What's the deal, man? I didn't I didn't move fast enough. So I wonder what does determine their um their targeting. Cloak. Sounds like that's a just like a s standard item piece. So part of me wants to like slowly move towards the end here. This is a very interesting uh, swap up from like a typical Slay the Spire map. So like, you know, all the people who always complain about that. Yeah, better not be complaining about this, too. Like, otherwise, I swear, man. Uh, what do we got in here? Chaos Mine. After every fight, if you beat this, then after every fight, you're going to get a Chaos Level reduction. Now, now, that seems like a really good thing to get right away, because Chaos Level is what's slowly increasing our stuff on the bottom. Uh... Got none of ya? If we can win this fight, we get interest. Do you have a piercing? Current target's location. You do take reduced damage, so that's why I thought that you might be a better tanky unit. But this guy's definitely, um, his ability is way better for that. Well, it's because he's a tier two, that's why. Yeah, why, why are you targeting here? That makes no sense. Okay, hold on. Targeting shifted? Just let him die, man. Just let him die, man. Okay, this guy's going absolutely wild. Okay. So, corruption down for every fight now. Because the thing is, it seems to imply that we don't want to do a full clear. Even more cast reduction. Who's skull? Skull. Okay, I did. I leveled up, so I can get. Um, I can get this. One sixty four. Twenty five experience. Uh, you know what? Let's refresh and see if we can find another thing then. All right, because we're still above a hundred. Hits the target, dealing magic damage. If they have no allies in adjacent space, they take even more damage. All right. I guess we're moving you all back. Even though I, I don't want it, but the targeting is just a little wild. Okay. Okay, this guy's doing some pretty nuts damage. Even more corruption reduction after fight win. We gotta put that cloak on. There's just so freaking much, man. Okay, so this is a one skull, which I think is relevant. Health stone. 
We have to put it on something in order to uh, actually see the combine. Giant bonus tout. You are not kidding. We're at 199. Undead Brawler. Don't I have one of those? I have a ghoul. Alright, I think we stop there. Because this shouldn't be a tough fight. On paper. So you teleport to the... You are teleporting the back line. You are a mage killer. I didn't even look at what my set bonuses do yet. I was just been so happy to kind of like be a little bit more free here. Okay, my summoning experience increases. Oh, cool. Like just for the straight up level ups. You are reinforced. Hmm. Oh, shoot. So just by, wait, hold on. By showing up over here, I'm just like absolutely screwed. Okay, hold on. Okay. You teleport to the back line, kill somebody quick. You could get royally screwed over by an ambush. So, like, is the implication that I'm not supposed to be over here at all, then? Huh? Is that the idea? I mean, if I beat them, I could probably beat this person with upgrades, right? They were reinforced as well. Dedicated summoning is available. Give me an undead. Okay. I'm pretty close to getting a, a, a tier 3 of that son of a gun. Let me with a refresh, see what we can do. Another assassin, I wouldn't mind. Uh, but yeah, undead, when their health drops below 50%, it regenerates. I figured as much. Uh, they heal for... A percentage of their max health every second. Great. So yeah, maximum. Just adding max HP is just good for them. If the item's owner ever gets hit with an enemy ability, the enemy who casts it will receive magic damage equal to 18% of their max health. Seems good, man. Are we going under? Are we going under our uh, limit? I guess we can just lock. You should be, like, noticeably tankier now, right? Okay. Oh, my. Okay, that guy got targeted over there. I thought that we'd be fine, c considering we took out the uh, the other guy. Please cast your ability. You're stunned. All right, we're dead, man. We're dead, man. It's no joke. This guy needed to uh, not get hit. That is brutal. Wow, I thought that since I took the ambush out on accident, you know, that I'd be able to uh, to be fine, but... The truth of the matter is, it's like, it's very much, uh, great. Uh, very much a meta progression thing, too, anyways. So it's like, could I have done that? Yeah, I, I think I could have done it if I just, you know, uh, spent a whole bunch of time scattered around the first floor, uh, looking for all of the easy fights. But I just wanted to kind of push it forward, plus I typically end my videos after about an hour here, so... Uh, that kind of works in my favor very, very well, that that was a little bit brutal. Uh, but I, I like the format a lot. I think that uh, they could streamline the earlier process a lot. I, like, I know that they're, they clearly want to have, you know, a rich 
world with lots of lore and everything like that. And I think that, you know, it's accidentally uh, making them just talk over themselves a lot. And I think that um, it could just be streamlined way, way, way better. Way, way better. Because uh, it's, it's, oh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, while also really not being that complex, it just makes it feel complex. I think some of the visual stuff is a little bit, uh, a little bit over-designed and a little bit, uh, you know, like, tough to parse in the overworld, everything like that. I think moving around is a little bit tricky. Um, I think the audio balance is a bit off. But all of those are things that are ultimately, this is the, this is the big thing I want to say. All of those things ultimately are so fixable. They are so fixable. It's not even, it's not even, like, not even funny. Uh, the thing that this game has going for it that is way harder to fix is just, like, the core design loop. I think is interesting. I think is compelling. Uh, I absolutely wish they did not go for a heavy meta progression route with a strategy game. I've gone on record a million times saying why I think that that's a flaw in a game of strategy where, uh, you know, you design it so potentially, I'm not saying this is the case, but you potentially design yourself into a situation where you literally need to grind to beat a puzzle that you otherwise may normally have the mental capacity to beat uh, is very frustrating. That's a very frustrating game design decision. Uh, and action, uh, the reason action roguelites get away with it more is because you have that weird like abstract nature of like, if you play like an absolute god, you probably can get over the hump of, of something that is designed for you to not be able to beat it, uh, more or less, or like you're supposed to be at like 20 hours of grinded meta progression to be able to overcome something. But if you play well enough, you can get over it. In a strategy game, going heavy in on meta progression like that is a flaw because you can't outplay meta progression often. Sometimes you can. It depends on the game. And that's why I say it's a bit, say it with a big asterisk and why I I I am not filled with confidence when I see it because I it is so rare that I've seen it done right. And it's almost always just a way to inflate play time and to uh, appeal to people who whine on like Steam reviews about, you know, replayability, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, when the game could just be so good that you want to keep playing it, right? And I think that this is the kind of game that is going to attract people who are deeply interested in strategy and the world. And for those people, I would imagine meta progress is not going to necessarily be the main draw for something like that. Uh, that being said, is it going to make you technically have more playtime in the game before you get to the end of it? Uh, sure. Uh, but ultimately, we'll, we'll see. That's a big we will see on, on that one, whether or not that is a problem or not. Regardless, it's something I don't like, but whether or not it's a design problem truly is up to whether or not it is possible to win without it. And the thing is, that causes a problem too, because if it's possible to win without it, then it's just going to get way too easy with it, right? I don't know. It's always, it's a dangerous zone. I prefer it not in the strategy roguelike. Uh, but hey, what are you going to do? I think it's very cool. I would have, like, I need to make this very clear. Like, People who are not uh, around on the channel often may see this video and think that like, oh, he was pretty negative on it or something. Eh, not really. I, I don't think I, I don't think so. Like any of the things that I said, these are all these are all like hot fixes. Like I'm not talking like completely change fundamentals. I'm not even saying to change the meta progress. Um, I'm not saying to change any fundamentals. I'm just saying like. There's just quality of life things that need to be ironed out. Uh, readability, legibility, uh, pacing, and uh, settings stuff. Like, th th those are the things that I have issues with. And the rest of it I like, genuinely. I, I think it's really cool. I think this could be uh, a very, very cool thing. And uh, you could chalk all, like, any of the visual things that I have as concerns up to just style choices as well. So it's like, it's not, nothing is needed to be fixed here. Uh, but. They're all preference things and things that I picked up as general audience preference uh, over the course of many, many years of doing YouTube 
covering roguelike games. So, alas, alas, that is that. That's going to do it for today. There's been Tower of Chaos. I think it's definitely one to watch. If you like this genre, and especially even if you like things mechanically, it looks like if you just kind of put in the time and just go through like the tutorial and the very, very wordy elements of it, you, you get to a point in the game where it's very, very um, uh, mechanical focused anyways. But alas, alas, thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you. Check out the channel for roguelikes and more every single day. And I'll see you next time. Bye.